Here's a few examples of self-similarity. Uh, you'll notice these in your textbook. I'm just going to kind of review them with you real quick. The first example here is called the Sierpinski Triangle. The Sierpinski Triangle is a figure that is self-similar because you can see that we start with a single triangle, and then what we do is draw, we connect the midpoints of that triangle. Oops, let me get a color we can see. Uh, white isn't the best color for that. We connect the midpoints of that triangle, and it forms another triangle, like so. And then what we do is take that center triangle and color it in. And that takes us from this original figure to the second figure. And then we can take each of the other triangles, the ones that are open that are not colored in, and we can do the same thing to them, connect their midpoints, and color in this, the resulting triangles, like so. And then each of those triangles, of course, then can become the next iteration along. So you could zoom in on any one of these triangles and start the whole process over. We could take this triangle right here, for instance, and start all back over, back over here at stage zero, and it would continue to end up being the same figure by the time you got in three stages as the one we started with originally. So this triangle is self-similar because any one of these sections here can be made to resemble the entire triangle itself or the entire figure itself after going through all the, uh, all the iterations. Example B, these are all fractals. I mentioned in the, uh, the introduction that I think fractals are kind of a lot of fun because uh, they sort of defy a lot of logical, logical definitions of shapes. Really, a fractal is just something that represents, that uh, shows self-similarity, but kind of defies easy description using uh, what we call short normal shapes in Euclidean geometry. And this is the basic example of a fractal that you have in your textbook here where we take a triangle and then we just rotate it on top of itself and then each of these we rotate on top of themselves so you can see if if I were to take that one and rotate it then we get this next shape here where those little points stick out and that of course is what we have in the next figure here and then of course the next pro next step here would be to take each of those little triangles and rotate them on top of themselves and we end up with more points so the figure gets more and more and more points as time goes on. These other figures down here and here and here are all similar. Um, they're all mathematically generated, but each of them represents something where if you were to take, for instance, this blue figure here, if we were to zoom in on it, and I don't have, unfortunately, the capability to do it accurately enough, but if you were to zoom in on any one of these little bubbles here, you'll see that they represent the same shape as the entire original figure does. So the whole figure itself represents self-similarity. And you can zoom in. There are a number of things you can find online, examples where you can zoom in on this, this particular figure here and see what happens as this gets closer and closer and closer to you and then starts to resemble the entire figure. And same thing with these other two, obviously. So fractals are kind of fun, but they definitely represent or uh, demonstrate self-similarity. And our third example here is a very similar, or a very simple, I mean, fractal. It's called the Cantor set. And to draw the Cantor set, what you do is you just have a straight line, and then you divide that line into thirds. Wow, yellow doesn't work so well over white. Divide that line into thirds, and then you erase the middle third. And that takes you to the next step. Now we have our two lines here. We divide these two lines into thirds and erase the middle third. And we end up with our next step, and so on and so forth. And obviously, anywhere along the way, we could take one of these lines and start over from the beginning and make its own whole unique set that would have exactly the same description as it went down through each individual stage. So that's self-similarity, kind of a fun concept. Like I said, if you are interested in this, take a look at chaos theory and see how it, um, T-H-E-O-R-Y, <laughs> see how it relates to fractals. And you'll find that on Google with no problem at all.